we find out now that we've got oversized radiators that are putting on so much heat. So, so the, the people say, please do something. And they ask the government to get involved. And, and the government does research because we're now involved in, in the Great Recession. And the radiators are too big and we're trying to save fuel. So the government finds out that if we use a certain type of paint called, called a bronzing, uh, an aluminum bronze or a gold bronze paint, uh, this is paint that has metallic flakes in it. And if you put that on a radiator as the last coat, it will cut down on the radiator's output by 20%. You see aluminum bronze right here. So a radiator that's bare, not painted at all, puts out 240 BTUs per hour. If you paint it with this aluminum bronze paint, the output drops to 192 BTUs per hour. And it's only the last coat that matters. If you paint it above, uh, on top of that, say if you painted it black, it would go back to being 240 BTUs. If you painted a terracotta, which is the color of a flower pot, it would actually pick up 3.8%. You'd have more output. So the color of a radiator does indeed matter. And this, by the way, is why radiators are painted silver. And if you go to the Heating Museum on heatinghelp.com and look in old hot water, old steam, and under radiators, look for does the color of a radiator matter? And this is going to give you the 1935 word for word National Bureau of Standards report that explains the science behind that and how this bronzing paint works and why some radiators are painted only on the front or only on the back or some in some rooms painted, some in other rooms not painted. It, it lays the whole thing out for you and now you know why they are the color that they are. But that still wasn't enough to cut down on the oversized radiators. So they began to recommend that we put Enclosures over radiators. This this was not done to keep the children from being burned. Believe me on that. I, I'm 66 years old. I grew up with, with steam heat and and I touched the radiator, but I only touched it once because I was not a stupid child. But if you look at this, uh, this is actually to cut down on the radiator's output because the radiator is oversized as a result of the Spanish influenza. So if we do something as simple as put a shelf over the top of a radiator, that stops the convective air from moving in it. It, it bumps into the shelf. And it says here that you would have to add 20% to the size of the radiator to get the same output that you would have if that cover were not there, that shelf were not there. Over here, we've got no change because the, the, the center of the enclosure is solid. There's holes at the bottom, there's holes at the top. So the Cooler air can come in here, get heated, and move right through. This one over here, it actually says deduct 10%. So this is going to give you more output because we're, cre we're creating kind of a chimney effect here. We put, we put a board in front of the radiator, an enclosure. We've got a hole in the bottom, nothing in the top. So we create a chimney effect. More air moves across. It's kind of like adding a fan to the radiator, going from, say, a fan coiled unit that, with the fan off compared to the output that you get if the fan comes on. This one over here is my favorite because this is the enclosure that you see on most building radiators. The top is solid. The front is perforated with a million holes. And it says here, add 30%. So this says if you put that enclosure on a radiator, you're going to have to add 30% to the size of the radiator to get the same output that you would have if that enclosure were not there. People that sell these radiators nowadays, these radiator enclosures nowadays, talk about how this improves the efficiency of the radiator. Well, well, it, it does if the radiator is oversized. I mean, it's got to cut down 30% of the heat that you have in the room. So that's why it appears to improve the efficiency. So painted silver cuts 20%. Use this sort of enclosure, cuts an additional 30%. That's how they dealt with the radiators that were oversized as a result of the Spanish influenza. And notice while we're on this slide too, that every radiator is placed two inches away from the wall. That was always the ideal spacing. If you're ever moving a radiator, keep that in mind. It's supposed to be two inches away from the wall. And again, it's to create that chimney effect of the air moving behind it.